Today I'm going to show you how to install a pre-cut paint protection kit on this vehicle. It's going to be a hood, fender, and mirror kit. Um, I'd recommend a high quality 8 mil self-healing product if possible. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open this kit up that we got online here. Some instructions there. Should have a little squeegee in there. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is go over the tools that you'll need for the job. Um, you'll need your pre-cut clear bra kit, um, a preferably yellow turbo squeegee, but any color turbo squeegee will do. Um, a spray bottle full of um, distilled water um, and about 10-20% of baby shampoo. Um, and a spray bottle full of uh, distilled water um, or regular water is fine, preferably distilled water um, and 20-25% of isopropyl alcohol, 70-90%, any of that's fine, uh, water and rubbing alcohol to clean the surface with before applying it. Um, a clay bar, you don't uh, need these. Um, if, if your car has a little bit of sap, some bugs, it's a year or two old, you want to put a bra on it, you can pick these up at your local hardware store and I'll show you um, how to use that in just a second. Um, you'll need um, just a soft rag or cloth um, from around your house. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is start by cleaning the vehicle. Um, I'm going to start with the hood strip here. I'm going to spray this with rubbing alcohol and water. I'm going to go ahead and clean the surface. I'm going to wipe off the surface first. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the clay bar video here, even though it's not needed for this vehicle, um, for demonstration purposes, just show you how to use one. Um, it's nice to use one. Anyway, if you don't mind picking one up from the hardware store, they're only a few bucks. The reason I'm cleaning it first um, is so if there is any dust or grit on there, I'm not scrubbing it around with um, the clay bar. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and spray the area where I'll be applying the hood strip. And then I'm going to take a piece of this clay bar. The hood strip's going to come somewhere in here, so I'm going to go ahead and clean a few inches up above it. Make sure I hit everywhere that I'll need to hit. Yes. You want to do this wet. You can use the water and rubbing alcohol or the water and baby shampoo. Either one will work just fine. And that's about it right there. If you do have a spot where you have a little bit of tree sap, a bug or something, you know, you just spend a little time there and make sure you got it off. Okay. And grab the towel. I always like to flip it to a different spot than I used the first time. I'll go ahead and kind of scrub as I'm doing it again. The cleaner the better. Go up a little higher than the paint material will go. That way dust, dirty water and stuff doesn't run down behind the bra when I'm installing it. Okay. I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time in between cleaning it and applying it. So don't clean the surface and then go do something around the yard or the house for 15 minutes. You'd have to clean it again. Dust and certain things around your garage or wherever you're doing it will settle on it. I'd, uh, as soon as you clean it, I'd get right to putting the pattern on. So I'm going to open this kit up here. Um, this is a computer cut kit um, that we got online. Again, I'd recommend an 8 mil uh, self-healing, uh, high-quality paint protection film. Um, there's some cheap stuff out there. The self-healing's nice. Um, if you get light scratches on it, you can heat it with a heat gun or a steamer, and the majority of those scratches will go out of the product. Um, I'm going to lay out my patterns here. We've got this pre-cut computer kit here online. Um, we're finding that 
half the kits will come individualized like this, where this particular company has actually cut out the individual pieces. And some companies you'll get a roll, you roll out, and the patterns are all beyond there. Um, and then you'll just individualize them. Um, either way, as long as you're getting a high quality self-healing material, um, the install's basically the same either way. Um, one way is not necessarily easier or harder than the other. Um, in this case, they're individualized. Um, if they weren't, um, you, you would basically just trim them out. So, you set these aside. Um, I'm going to spray the hood here with the baby shampoo and water. Okay. This is real easy to do yourself. Um, you shouldn't need any extra help from anybody. If you have someone around the house, you may just have them peel that liner, but um, pretty easy to do yourself. Um, I'd recommend peeling it down halfway. Be generous with the baby shampoo and water and pull it down a little further. If this material sticks to itself dry, you won't get it back apart without ruining it. So you need to keep it wet as you're going. The trick is just put your foot on that and pull up. So that last little part that's dry there, I want to make sure that that doesn't touch itself and stick to itself. That's why I sprayed it wet as I pulled and then just pulled the last little bit off there at the end. Now it's wet. If it sticks together, it comes right back apart. Go ahead and line this up, lay it on there. Kind of do a little fit check there. Don't want to step on that. Looks like it fits great. You can see I got to line the nose up, bring that over. You want to check that your distances here on the right side are the same as on the left side. Get a feel for this. You can see this is curved. There's extra material here. Um, so that's going to need to get stretched. But a little bit of a gap there that tells me that this pattern is going to need a little stretch each way. So right now I have a one inch gap here and a half an inch gap here. So this pattern needs to go this way just a little so that those are even. Um, the software that was designed for this car. Um, it's telling me that it needs stretch. It's going to need stretch to get around this curve. And I can see that. Um, the computer cut kits, um, generally for the hood, fender, and mirrors, they're, they're not meant to wrap the edges. Um, if you wanted to just overstretch this from the very center, you could get a quarter of an inch extra material and, and, and wrap these edges if you want. With them being computer cut, they should line up right on the edge. And I'll show you how that works here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this with baby shampoo and water. And I'm going to take my turbo squeegee. Once again, make sure this is right where it needs to be here. And I'm always going to start in the middle and work my way from the center out. I'll take my rag that I used to clean the car to handle the, the water there. I'm going to stretch this nose down just a little. There's some extra material there. Stretching it helps get rid of that. And your squeegee passes you want to do like I'm doing here. That's kind of how you want to do this. I can either do that in half or this half first. I like to do this side first. It's just me. So you can see this slack here. As I stretch this, and pull it, here we had a bigger gap. It gets rid of the, the excess material there. Slide that down there. Okay, once I've stretched that and got that where I think it needs to be, I can tell this actually needs a bit more stretch here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that over for the time being. I just want to hold that with one hand right about where it needs to be. And then just start squeegeeing this out. Everything's going to center out. Just take your time and overlap your pattern. So in other words, don't jump the distance of the squeegee each time. Only move down a half an inch. That way you don't miss pushing any of the moisture out from behind the material.
going over a ridge like this in the hood, what you want to do is just kind of go slow and wiggle that back and forth. Make sure you're pushing all of the moisture out from behind the material. If you happen to roll over it a little bit like that there, just pull it back up and it back down. I'll go ahead and explain to you what you do in a situation like this where you get a little extra material. Um, what you want to do is just stretch it a little with one hand and lay it with the other hand. As that adhesive starts getting tacky, eventually it will lay down as the adhesive starts to dry and it won't pop back up. And I'll show you more of that in a minute. So once you've squeegeed the majority of the moisture out of one half, what I like to do is, is wipe off this side of the bra so I can see it, see if I missed anything. And I, I didn't, so go ahead and look that over. Let me stretch this, just give this a little push here for a minute, and then come back to it when I'm done with that side. Um, this has got quite a double curve, but still easy to do. I'm just Push that out, let that get tacky for a minute. And go back over here to this side. Do the same thing again over here. Give that a little stretch. Make sure that's lined up. Hold it where it needs to be. Once again, everything's from the center out. Get a little spot like that, you just pop it back up. It's okay to pull this back up and lay it back down. It's not going to hurt anything as long as it's wet. Let's see, that's running up a little high, so I'm just going to pull it down where it needs to go. One hand, I'm going to squeeze you with the other one. Again, got a, a curve in your hood or a double curve or a tough spot like this, you just lift that right back up and just give it a little stretch. Press through there slow and hold. And just work that out like that. Go ahead and clean this side. Take a look at what we've done. And I'm going to go around and seal the edges. Little spots where it may need. Spot here, this adhesive should start tacking up now. Just start laying that down there. Come back over here. We just had a couple little things there, very minimal. Go ahead and just push those down. That side's good. Come back over here. This should start getting tacky now. Matter of fact, sometimes you can just use your thumb or one of your fingers rather than the squeegee. You can feel it a little better in your hands or a little softer for those last little things there. If you want, you can use the squeegee assistance to stay well right there. So you can see that that is now laid down. I've got hood strips on there. So to move on to the fenders. my fender pieces 
obviously these are the mirrors, they're much smaller. These are the fender pieces. You need to know which side's the driver and passenger. So I'm going to come over here and uh, fit check it. That right there. Let's see. That's probably the other side. So let's grab this other one. Sometimes you get a fender or triangle pattern, it's going to deceive you a little bit. You kind of need to look at them real close because flip, they could be almost the right pattern. But once you put them on, they could be wrong. Like that one was really close, but it just wasn't quite. This is, this is the correct piece for right there. So, go ahead and clean this one more time with alcohol and water. There's no tree sap or anything on this one, so I wouldn't just clean it really well. Baby shampoo and water. I always like to double check everything one last time right before I put it on. Make sure I didn't pick up the wrong one. I did. If you do and you've filled the backing, you can always just spray your side and start over there. Pull that off. Use plenty of gel there. Go ahead and put that on there and line that up. You can see that the software that these guys use is pretty right on, and that fits the vehicle perfectly. Go ahead and give that a little miss. Sometimes you can even wipe your squeegee over there on the excess. Um, what I like to always do is just start from the middle out. This pattern necessarily it doesn't necessarily need you to start from the center out. Um, it's a very easy, small pattern to apply. Um, I just uh, like to do it that way. Been that way for years. Looking at the pattern, making sure it doesn't move. On a smaller pattern, they'll tend to move around a lot. You want to make sure that your lines are still even and the pattern still lined up as you're squeegeeing. If it moves on you halfway through your squeegee, you just pull it back off, spray it again, and start over. If you keep an eye on it when you're doing it, generally it won't move. Um, there's the driver's fender. Move over to Passenger fender. First thing I'm going to do is clean it. Doing a good job of cleaning is really important. Go ahead and spray that. We know this is the right fender. Grab my squeegee. Start in the center there. You always want to pull the squeegee stroke. You don't want to push. It'll overlap it and you'll miss. Um, you just always push the squeegee. Very rarely push it like that. This way is best. If you get to a tight spot, sometimes you can do that there on the edge. But even then, you should always try to. Go ahead and 
and wipe that off. See if I missed anything. Plus clean the vehicle. You can see that lined up nicely there. You can check spots like this. Um, now the adhesive's getting really sticky, it's really tacked up there. So on that curve where we had to stretch that, um, it's just laying right down. If you have to stretch a nose like this a little bit um, to get it to lay down on the curve, um, you can always wrap that and you can leave it wrapped or trim it to match the other there. Um, the sides stay good. I see a good offenders with that. Um, if you have painted mirrors, um, you can go ahead and apply the mirror pieces. Um, they're really easy. I'm going to go ahead and show you for, like I said earlier in the video, um, demonstration purposes for this um, instructional video. Um, I wouldn't recommend putting material on a plastic mirror. If you have one, I would just discard these. Um, if they're painted, which half or more of the vehicles are, um, you'd want to apply these. So the first thing you're going to want to do is clean the surface. Uh, this mirror would be painted if you were doing it um, to protect the paint from chips. Um, so if this mirror were painted silver, this actually happens to be the other side, so this is a perfect example of what you might um, do at home. So it's actually good that that happened. I can show you how I would handle that. I would just walk it right over to this side, clean the surface with the alcohol and water. Come over here. And just go ahead and apply this one here my vehicle had silver painted mirrors here, I'd want to, a lot of stuff's going to come right at the base of that, chip that all up, it's going to look pretty, pretty nasty after a year, or a month or two, depending on how much driving you do. But when applying it to a mirror, um, you, you kind of want to work from the center out. Mirrors are generally pretty curved, so you want to start from the center out and stretch to the corners. Um, and then when you get around the curve like this, you stretch it to get rid of that and then wrap, wrap it around like that. In this particular case, um, you're protecting this mirror. It's kind of shiny, but not recommended to put it on plastic. Um, it doesn't chip too bad, so really no reason to, to do that. I think if it was my vehicle, I'd probably throw the patterns away or keep them for something else. That's how you apply that on a painted mirror, and you just repeat that over here on the other side. Um, we've already cleaned that and sprayed that, so go ahead and grab your other mirror pattern, give it a spray. Go ahead and put that and line it up on the face of the mirror there. Grab my squeegee, go through the center. thing I'd probably do is come back around and just kind of look everything over, um, check your edges, maybe rub the, your finger along the edges, make sure that it's sealed down and laid down good. Um, and that's how you install um, a pre-cut, um, high quality self-filling paint protection kit um, on a hood, fenders, and mirrors. Um, please like our video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.